for a nation of EVs. Now, Ford Motor a Company announcing a delay to the opening of an electric vehicle plant in Tennessee. Uh, Ford deciding not to produce an electric SUV. Uh, this will potentially cost them nearly $2 billion. Electric car sales have been falling far short of initial expectations. News Nation did reach out to Ford for comment, but so far, no reply. Uh, joining me right now, Frank Lopez, president of Strong 30 Automotive. Frank, thank you so much uh, for joining us right now. You know, I would I would think that if people were to look at the data over the past few years, you could kind of see the writing on the wall here. Uh, President Trump in Michigan at a campaign stop making the case saying, I'm not going to force you to buy an electric vehicle. And I think in places like California, where it was seen as and it still is something that is, you know, imminent, America's just not quite ready for it. But is there anything surprising that we need to know about why EVs are not taking off the way that maybe some thought they would? Adrian, no, there, there's absolutely nothing that's really like, so to say, surprising about this in, in any way. There is this thing that has occurred that nobody kind of knew that was going to happen, something that is called rage anxiety, where as you have an EV, you're driving an EV, but you immediately begin to have anxiety over the over the fact of where am I going to charge this thing? Am I going to run <laughs> right. out? You know, right? Am I going to run out <laughs> of charge? What in the world is it that I'm going to do? Where am I going to find a charger? Even with 160, over 160,000 chargers available in the United States, it is still, to this day, it is still not easy to charge a electric vehicle. No, and I, and I was going to bring that up in one of my uh, questions because, I mean, you go someplace like California, yeah, you'll see more of them there uh, because of the push to get us all to electric. Uh, maybe parts of Texas, um, I've seen them there, and that's about it. <laughs> but yeah, that's they're about so it. Far, and Adrian, it's far and away from each other. That's right. And Adrian, you bring up you bring up Texas. Just two weeks ago, I was in Houston, Texas and renting a car. Right. And I rented a Ford Lightning pickup truck, which was, to be honest, was an absolutely fantastic vehicle, fantastic pickup, fantastic acceleration. It was absolutely great until the battery level started going like this. Right. <laughs> then I was like, whoa, what am I going to do? Right. This is going to be this is going to be a big issue. And I had to return the vehicle to Hertz with the battery being low so i felt rage you no know, uh range anxiety myself firsthand and it's an absolutely true thing well and i actually was able to tour the ford f-150 lightning assembly line uh for one of our stories when they first launched this truck it's gorgeous it's 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 fun to drive but i mean let's like forecast this out because we've had conversations like this before about evs just not quite having the same, you know, the, the sales that the auto industry expected. But can we foresee that this was maybe done wrong, that somebody wasn't thinking this all the way out when innovation maybe didn't catch up with expectation? Right, absolutely. I, I mean, it's, it was a no. You showed the clip. You know, you showed the clip before of President Biden talking about how talking about the mandates and all this type of stuff. And of course, at the time, all of those types of things they all sound great until you put them into practicality, until you put them into actual use. Now, Ford's shift here, shifting from focusing so much on EV to focusing over to hybrids. Now we're talking. Now we're talking about about a very very good move because hybrids definitely are not a thing of the future. They are a thing of the present. They are a thing of right now. Almost a best of both of both worlds type of a scenario for a consumer. And also Ford focusing on commercial vans for electric, focusing on midsize electric pickup trucks for electric. Very very smart when you're in a commercial application. Right. Range anxiety is something that is not really a thing. All Amazon, most, not all, most Amazon delivery trucks, at least in my area, New Jersey, those are all electric. And when you have a route and you know how long it's going to take, you know how many miles it's going to be and everything, it makes total sense. There are people watching right now that are like, I have no problem finding a charger. Well, of course you don't, because you <laughs> drive from your house to your job, then from your job to the house, you plug it in all night. And that's beautiful. That's great. That's the thing of, you know, maybe EV and maybe an electric vehicle is for you. Fantastic. Buy one, buy three. It's but, the, but saying that everybody has to have one. 
now now we got to slow the roll a little well, bit. Well, and I'm, I'm glad you're saying it because I think that, you know, again, people try to politic and pick one campaign over the other. But the fact is there are some things that are very common sense and the numbers just don't add up. The Biden administration had this ambitious goal to have 500,000 charging stations by 2030. So far, they've built seven, seven <laughs> total. Yeah. I think they've had a few Seven. other things to deal with. Uh, but um, what do you yeah, Maybe he's, he's occupied with something else. Maybe <laughs> a little bit more. Thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.